Hi everyone, it's Miss Gaddy again. I'm going to be going over lesson 14-2, which is the same exact thing, more line plots that you were just doing. This time we're going to go a little bit more in depth. Um, I am on page 809, so if you want to turn your page to that page and follow along with me, that would be awesome. All right, let's go ahead and start. Measure the length of your shoe. Then use your data and data from your class to make a line plot. Tell one thing you learned from the data. Okay, so this one's a little bit difficult because we're not in school. So we don't have our classmates to be able to get more data. So instead of using our class, we're going to use our family. All right. So you need to go around your house to your family members and um, measure your family member's shoes. You can do your mom, your dad, your aunt your cousin, your sister, your brother, whoever lives with you, um, you can use, okay? So I'm gonna make up some numbers right now because I don't actually know, like I said before, I don't have a ruler with me, so I don't actually know how big my foot is right now or my parents, but, so I'm just gonna make up some numbers right now. Obviously, I want you to use your ruler and measure it. All right, so let's start with um, measuring ourselves. okay? So we're gonna measure our own foot. And I'm going to say that my foot is six inches. So I'm going to put a little line on the six and I'm going to put an E or I'm sorry, an M and an E for me. Okay. Next, pick another family member. I'm going to pick my dad. Okay. So I'm going to measure my dad's foot and let's say he has a really big foot and his foot is 10 inches. So I'm going to put a dot on the 10 and I'm going to label that with a D for dad. Okay, now I want to label or measure my mom's foot next. So let's say that her foot is eight inches long. So I'm going to put a dot on eight and put an M for mom. And I want to measure my little sister's foot as well. So when I measure her foot, let's say that it's a four. Okay, so we're going to put S for sister. Again, you use whoever you want to. Okay. Um, if you have friends that you're playing with outside, you can measure their foot maybe, or, you know, whoever you want. If you have a really small baby sister or brother, that might be kind of fun to see how big their foot is. All right. So after you do that, you're pretty much done with this part of it. Um, not much to it. It's the same thing we've been doing, measuring and just putting it on the, um, the line. So let's go ahead and go to the next page now. All right. So again, I want to just remind you that anytime we start a new lesson and you go to this next page right here, this information right here is always going to be there to help you. OK, so if you ever get stuck or confused, go back to that and read what they say and look at how they're doing it. OK, they're giving you step by step um, examples of how to solve the problem. All right. So use that as a tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go down. All right, so right now I'm just going to be focusing on question one for now. Okay, so it says use the table to make a line plot. Then use the line plot to answer each, each question. All right, so I know this looks a little confusing and it's a little bit different than what we had seen before in our previous lesson. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. So you're going to look at each one of these numbers, okay? We're going to start with this one, and that is 7. So you're going to put a dot on 7, okay? Do the best you can. We're going to go to the next number. You can go up and down or sideways. It doesn't really matter. You're going to get to all the numbers at some point. Okay, that next number is a 5, so I'm going to put a dot on 5. Okay, that next number is a 6, so I'm going to put a dot on 6. There's a 4, put a dot on 4. Here's a nine, put a dot on nine. Okay, so you're just gonna keep going back and forth, putting, now look, I hit another four. So I'm gonna add another dot the best I can on top of the four, okay? You don't want it to blend in and be one big dot. You wanna see that they're two separate dots, okay? I'm trying to make it better, but I made it kind of worse. Okay, the next number is a seven. Oh, another seven, so we're gonna just put another dot on top. A six, another six, we're gonna put another dot on top. Another six, so now six has three dots on it. There's an eight, oh, our first eight. Another six, another four, 
is another seven, another five, another eight, and one more six. So hopefully yours looks a little bit better than mine. It is a little bit hard to make the small dots with my finger on the computer. So with a pencil though, I'm sure it's easier to do. Okay, so now that we've gotten all those numbers and if I were you, I would make a dot next to it or cross it off as you go because you don't wanna accidentally do the same number two different times or skip a number, okay? So make sure that as you're going, you're crossing it out or making a dot next to it or something so that you know you've done it. All right, so now that we're done with all that, let's look at um, number two. So now this is a question. It says, what is the most common feather length? So when that says most common, it's saying, which one of those um, numbers has the most dots in it? Which one happened, occurred the most, okay? So I'll give you a second to look at it, even though they give you the answer. I want you to look back at your number line and see which one has the most dots in it. Okay, and as you can tell, number six has one, two, three, four, five dots, which is the most dots. So when we answer the question, it's asking which has the most common feather length. Six centimeters had the most, so we're gonna write six. All right. So now number three says, why does the number line use the numbers four through nine? Okay, well, let's think about this. Why did they use the numbers four through nine? Well, if you look up here at our data points, the numbers that are occurring are numbers four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So because the graph is using all those numbers, our number line has to match that as well. So that's a lot for me to write right now, but you can put that into your own words and write it right there. All right, so let me go ahead and erase this real quick so that um, we can look at what's next. There we go. Okay. Oops, still in there. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this part, let's see. Measure the length of your pencil in centimeters. Collect pencil length from your classmates. Again, you don't have classmates to compare it to, so just use different pencils that you find around your house. Or if you don't have a bunch of pencils, you can use different pens, different crayons, different market markers, whatever you need to use, okay? And you're gonna, just like we did before, you're gonna label them there. So let's say your pencil was six inches, you're gonna put a six. But let's say you find a marker that's, um, that's eight inches, so you're gonna put an eight right there, okay? So whatever inches you put, you find, you're gonna write it there, and then you're gonna put dots of how many you found that were each six inches and each eight inches, okay? I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry. You can just move on from it, okay? There's no point in getting frustrated over it. Um, okay, so once you fill that out, you're gonna answer which one is the longest, which one is the shortest pencil, um, Okay, just like you did before, that is not anything new because you just did it in our last lesson. So let's move on and see what else there is to go over. We're gonna go ahead and skip this page real quick. All right, so let's look at this and see what they want us to do for it. All right, so here, it's already done for us, okay, all the measurements are already done so that's good so it's saying which measurement of the length of scissors is the most common okay again you're going back into your um number line right here and you're looking which one of these numbers right here has the most dots on it all right that should be a pretty easy answer so i'm not gonna answer that for you okay and then Question two, why did people get different measurements? Okay, so it's asking you to write either a yes on here or a no. So let's look at this. The object has a shape that is not flat. Hmm, so you need to decide if that's why people got different measurements is because the shape isn't flat. If you think that it's flat, 
not flat, then you're going to put a, um, if you think that the object is flat, you're going to put a um, no on this, okay? Or if you think it is flat, you're going to put a yes. Okay, the measurement is halfway between two units. So when it says two halfway, that means that the measurement could be right here or in the middle of it, okay? And then the ruler is not aligned with zero when used, all right? So this part may be a little difficult. I just want you to do the best you can, all right? That's all that I'm looking for. Um, if it is too difficult and you're not understanding, then you can definitely skip it and move on to the next um, part. So let's see what else there is. All right, more of the same thing. All right, so that is all I'm gonna do for right now. I will make a new video later with 14-3 for bar graphs. Um, but for now, I want you to keep practicing doing your graphs and your number lines. That should be pretty easy. Remember, if you need extra help, go back to, let's see what page it is. Go back to page 810 and look up here for that extra support and extra help and examples, okay? All right, I hope this helped. And if you have any more questions, definitely let me know. All right, have a great day, you guys. See you later.